Hi guys and dolls, how are you? Hopefully you're doing well. Um, those of you who are subscribed, thank you very much. You do not know how much I appreciate you. Those of you who are not subscribed, why not? It's free. Click the button, join the family. Okay? All right, now, y'all should know me by now. I'm going to keep it real, okay? Um, as you know by the title, sometimes people get addicted to other people. And we don't know exactly how to get out of that situation. Um, so I'm going to help you. And I've been in that boat too. You know, where I just can't stop communicating with this person and they've lost interest two minutes after they talk to me or whatever. Um, which is kind of ridiculous. But when you're dealing with people from online, that's what happens. They lose interest in you two seconds you're cool for about five minutes and then they meet someone else who's cool for about five minutes and then they continue to meet other people who are cool for about five minutes and then the cycle continues so they lack the maturity level to be with one person at a time so what we're going to do is go over my notes here if it wants to cooperate that would be lovely all right so First thing first, um, bear with me because I'm looking at notes and my thing over here is acting stupid, so let's try that again. Let's try that again, okay, because that's just not working for me. All right, what to do when you are addicted to someone and they're not good for you, okay? And like I said, I'll be looking down because I'm going over my notes. Um, the first step to fixing a problem is admitting that you have one. Okay, You have to admit that you're out of control. You have to admit that this person has, in some cases, manipulated you. Whether it's for money, whether it's for a place to stay, whether it's for your emotions, whether it's for sex, no matter what it is that they have wanted to get from you, they've received it and then they're out. And in some cases, they're out before that because they see something else that's sparkly and they want to get over there. So they don't even have to get anything from you and they're already gone. I'm listening because I wonder if that was my door. Maybe not. Anyway, so the first step to fixing a problem is admitting you have one. You have to be willing to realize that you are out of control. Don't get mad at your friends. Don't get mad at your family. Don't get mad at anybody because they are trying to help you. Okay? And when someone's addicted, whether it's to sex or to drugs or to alcohol or to another person or to love there are such thing there is such a thing called love addiction where you just you're addicted to the high from being in love whatever it is you're addicted to the recovery is the same people try to help you you get mad at them you get irate you get hostile you start throwing false accusations you just don't want me to be happy contrary they want you to be happy and they know that this person is not going to do it for you Regardless of you think that the sun shines and, you know, rises and shines out of their butt, they're not good for you, okay? So don't get mad at the messenger. Don't get mad at me today because I'm going to say some things that you're probably not going to be thrilled with, but I'm just keeping it real with you, okay? And I've been on this page before where I had a crush on somebody, probably a couple times in my lifetime, had a crush on somebody, and they weren't thinking about me. So it was a complete waste of my time. They didn't even know I existed. Janet Jackson has a song called, um, oh, I can't remember, but y'all know which one I'm talking about, where he doesn't even know I'm alive or something, part of the lyrics, I can't remember. But at any rate, you're invisible to them, but yet you can't stop. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's not an easy situation. But like I said, I'm going to help you through it, okay? 
All right, so when your friends and family are telling you that this person is bad for you and they don't give you the respect you deserve and that has zero impact on you, you still hope that one day you will be together forever. In fact, you find yourself mad at them for bringing it up. That is a huge red flag, okay? You think you're in love with this person. You think you can't breathe without them. How did you breathe before you met them? How did you manage your life before you met them, before you knew them? You feel like your world is falling apart, but I promise you, it is not. And you will recover. And you will move on to someone else. But you have to be willing to do that. And you have to know that you are worth more than what you're getting or what you're not getting. You're worth more than that. And once a person is psychologically disconnected from you for whatever reason it is, there's nothing, listen to me carefully, there is nothing that you can say or do that's going to make them go, oh, I just noticed you for the first time. You're amazing. They're not going to do that. Okay, they would have did that a long time ago and they, they're not doing it. So they're not going to get a wake up call unless it's a major miracle, you know, but usually crushes are called crushes for a reason. Somebody ends up getting crushed. And that's why it's called a crush. You see what I'm saying? Listen carefully. You are willing to lose everyone who cares about you and in some cases willing to lose your job and willing to lose the relationship you have with your own kids. People who truly love you will eventually back away from you because they cannot handle you hurting yourself anymore. It's the equivalent of watching someone you love laying on a train tracks and hoping they don't get hit by the train. That is emotional torture for people who love you, so they will back away. When you are willing to lose some of your closest friends for this person, who do you think would be there to pick up the pieces when you realize that this situation has hijacked your thought process. This situation has hijacked your thought process. It's no different than a, a plane being hijacked. Somebody has hijacked your common sense. Somebody has hijacked your brain and they have paralyzed your life. And while you busy crying over them, eating a box of a whole box of ice cream, they're not thinking about you. And I know that sounds cold blooded, but I'm not trying to be cold. Like I said, I've been on the receiving end of that where I am 1000% invisible. Okay. So unfortunately, I know how people do. You know what I'm saying? All right. Uh, let's see. You continue to put yourself in a situation to be used or manipulated by this person. Even though on a logical level, you know that you are out of control, but yet you won't put an end to it and you still have illogical hope. So you also refuse to go no contact. How beneficial do you think that is? I'm going to I'm going to cling to this person and one day they're going to get a wake up call and one day we're going to be together and one day they're going to realize that I do breathe and I do exist. Honey, you can't sell yourself to somebody. They either think you're amazing or they don't. And if they don't, good luck getting them to notice you one day. And let me tell you something else. Because you know me, I'm going to keep it real. I don't care how beautiful you are. I don't care how handsome 
you are. I don't care how articulate you are. I don't care how educated you are. I don't care how successful you are. I don't care if you have the biggest hopes and dreams for your future. Someone will still perceive you to be invisible to them. They don't see the gifts that you have. They don't see that you're amazing. They don't see that your heart is huge. They don't see that you protect the people that you care about. They don't see that. So you're invisible to them. Your beauty or your good looks, your handsomeness, whatever it is, your, your, your sense of humor, all of that is irrelevant to them. Do not listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth. Do not take that personally. You know why I'm telling you don't take it personally? Because I want you to look at this. There are celebrities who got with the wrong person. They got married, they had kids, whatever the story is, okay? He's good looking, she's good looking, or one of them is a celebrity or they're both celebrities or whatever the case is. I don't care how beautiful and how intelligent and how great you are and how amazing you are. Somebody can still walk away from you. And yes, we've been together for 20 years, but I don't care because I'm really tired of looking at you. I am so tired of looking at you. So it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what your gifts are. Either somebody notices your gifts or they don't. You cannot convince them that you are amazing. If they're blind and they can't see that, honey, it's time to move on. You can't convince them. Do you see how awesome I am? I, I made you a resume of all my accomplishments. They don't care because a lot of people are zombies. They are dead emotionally. There's nothing, nothing, nothing you can say to wake them up. Nothing. I've seen actresses that are drop dead gorgeous, fine. They've got 0.1% body, body fat. And their husband will leave them for someone who does not look as nearly as good as the girlfriend or the fiance or the wife. So it has nothing to do with how you look. It has to do with the lack of maturity level and where that person's head is. It has nothing to do with you as much as it has to do with them. Okay? All right. I know it doesn't, that doesn't feel any better because you still are being treated the way you're being treated. But I'm telling you, it doesn't have anything to do with you. And it doesn't mean that you don't have gifts to offer. And it doesn't mean that you're not an amazing person. It just means that that's not the person for you. Because for whatever reason, they don't see that. Or, or, in some cases, they do see it. And it scares the crap out of them. What? In some cases, they do see it, and it scares the crap out of them. Because they know that they could possibly fall in love with you, and they have psychological barriers against having emotions for somebody because they've been burnt in the past. And that's a lame excuse, and the reason I say that is because either you're doing the burning to someone, or you are on the receiving end. Either you get over your obstacles in life or you don't, but don't hold on to them for dear life because you don't want to risk putting your heart out there. Anything that's worth having is worth the effort to make it work. Nothing is going to fall in your lap. But with that being said, if this person is not for you, it is not your fate to be with them. It is not your destiny to be with them. They do not respect you. They do not care about you. They don't love you, regardless of whatever nonsensicals they said out of their mouth in the heat of the moment or doing you know, passionate kissing or whatever it is that you all are doing. And they said all these you know, romantic words. Please, unless there's actions behind that, in one ear and out the other. Okay? Actions speak louder than words. I'm just saying. Okay, so now are you ready for the, the, the whammy? Okay, here we go. Put your seatbelt on. You ready? Okay. Would it surprise you to know that your addiction has nothing 
let me repeat that, has nothing to do with that person as much as it has to do with a serious lack of self-esteem. You heard what I said? Has to do with the serious lack of self-esteem. The reason I say that is because of this. You have to know that you do not, under any circumstances, deserve to be thought of only after that person has made other phone calls with no luck. So they contacted you as a fallback. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Friday night, you done called Susie, Mary, or... Peter, Paul, and Bob, and none of them paying down, so you figure you fall back on old yeller, old faithful. Don't be that. Don't be the backup plan. Either be the first plan or don't be part of the plan. It's just that simple. You have to know that you are worth more than that. You have to know that you deserve to be treated with respect. You have to know that life is too freaking short to deal with stupidness. Okay? Way too short for that. Life can be over 30 seconds from now. Life could be over tonight when you step out your house and a drunk driver hits you and now you're paralyzed. I mean, your life can change drastically in a drop of a hat. Why waste your time on somebody who ain't thinking about you? And I'm just keeping it real. They're not thinking about you. Let them go. Let them go. Spend more time with your family. Spend more time with your friends. Spend more time with people who you don't have to pine for them. You don't have to say, can you text me? Can you call? Can you text me? Can you call? Can you write me on whatever the forums are? Will you Facebook me? Forget about it. They don't have time for you, baby. Don't have time for them. That's just as simple as it is. And I'm going to tell you, the first few days to the first couple of weeks are going to be the hardest. Because it's fresh and it's new. If you could get past the first couple of days and the first couple of weeks, if you could get past all that, you're, you're moving in the right direction, okay? But you have to be patient with yourself through that period. And you need to spoil yourself. You need to spoil yourself. You need to do what makes you happy. For girls, chicks, it may be, you know, we light some candles, we listen to some music, we lay in the bathtub until we turn into a crinkle cut french fry, okay? Um, for guys, it might be playing hoops with the fellas or maybe going out and having a beer. Don't get nuts and don't get drunk because that's not going to resolve anything. I'm going to get blasted out of my head and I won't think about her and I won't care about her. That's not the road that you want to go down, okay? You just don't want to start doing that. All right. So, there are some people who are addicted to love. They see every person they have ever met as a potential forever fantasy. I'm not kidding. I'm serious. I've known two people who have that condition. Everybody's a potential spouse. Everybody's a potential partner in love. Both of them have borderline personality disorder. And they have a tendency to be delusional. So good luck trying to get some sense into them. Everybody's a potential romantic partner. And it's just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Really? Really? 
some young ladies have never had a father in their life. So they are desperately trying to find him in men. More often than not, they choose men like their father or men who are emotionally unavailable like their father was. This is an emotional dead end. Some men have the same issue. They choose women just like their mother, which may not always be a good thing. The good news is, once you realize the pattern, you can change it. If you cannot change it on your own, professional help is available to you, some of which is free. Did you hear what I said? Some of which is free. Okay. Through support groups, pastors, and doctors so that they can take you can take, I'm sorry, medication in addition to therapy. Your insurance may cover therapy or at least a percentage of it. There are online support groups as well. So, you know, what I said is pretty deep. And especially in the day and age of the internet where somebody can replace you in 10 seconds flat there's a lot of immaturity and predatorial behavior online um, online can be a playground for predators okay and I've always said that online can be a playground for predators and depending on the site that you go to, they may not all be predators, but, and I'm talking men and women. I'm not picking on either gender. I'm talking about both, either one or both. You know, they're playing people like a piano because they're, they're feeding off of the adrenaline rush. They're, they're feeding off of all the attention. They're feeding off of the compliments I mean they just get a major rush with that you know what I'm saying and time will tell whether that person is legit or not time will tell and even in real life in, in person face to face I've seen a societal climate where People don't really feel connected to you. So they're connected to you, quotation marks, for a short while. And then instead of saying, whether it's been a month, two months, three months, six months, whatever the time frame is, they don't necessarily tell you, you know what, um, I know we've been hanging out for a while, you know. But I have to be honest with you, I don't think we're compatible. They don't necessarily tell you that. They will do the cowardly thing and they will ghost you. Because that's the society we live in where people have no conscience anymore. Now, if you do that to them, God help you. Well, how dare you? But if they do it to you, well, that's okay. Because they weren't hurting themselves when they did that to you. Because they're playing with this one over here and then they're playing with that one and this one and that one. Playing everybody's emotions. You know what I'm saying? So... Just know that it's not necessarily anything that you've said or done. Um, this person can lose interest. Listen to what I'm saying. Without provocation. You did not have a fight with them. You did not have an argument with them. You got along with them well, and they're in the wind. You, they're gone. Because you were just kind of like an ornament on a Christmas tree. You were sparkly and nice for the time being. And I think the world of you. And I really think you're amazing. And I think you're so attractive. And I think that you're so, you know, you're well-versed and you're educated. And you're, you're just, you know, I, I can see us having something. 
down the line once we get to know each other. Oh, look at that. That's what they do. Talk all that trash until somebody else walks by and they're like. And they don't tell you goodbye. They're just in the wind. And a good rule of thumb is this. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Okay? You don't want to be ghosted. Don't ghost somebody else. Hello? It's not rocket science. You know what I'm saying? Treat people the way you want to be treated. And... The behavior that people are doing nowadays, wow, wow. Ghost you in a heartbeat. Um, and think nothing of it. Absolutely don't care. And if their friends should ever tell them, well, if they have any friends. You know, well, what happened to that person you were getting to know? He or she seemed to be really cool. Oh, it didn't work out. Of course it didn't work out because you ran away. Did I go there? Yes, I did. You ran away because you saw somebody who grabbed your attention. And then you're not going to stay with that person either because before you know it, you'll see someone else that grabbed your attention. There's always going to be somebody out there that grabs your attention. Always. All ways. And if you lack the maturity level to sustain a relationship or to get to know someone one on one and stop trying to get to know everybody else at the same time, if you don't have the maturity level to do that, here's a clue stop doing it. Or, or, y'all know I like doing that. Or, quit laughing, it's not funny. Um, just be honest with people and say, hey, I, I, I can't commit to nothing. I could commit to giving you about, I don't know, a couple hours. And I really have a hard time committing to that. Are people going to be honest about that? Not usually. Not usually. Sometimes they will be. They'll tell you that. You know, I'm dating around. I'm not trying to commit to anything. I've been hurt before, which that gets so old. Please, everybody who ever felt anything for anyone, they've been burnt. If you have no conscience and you've never been burnt before, it's because you have no conscience. But for those of us who do have a conscience and a soul, <laughs> go figure. Chances are we've been hurt for it. If you have a good heart, someone can't wait to step on it. That's just the way life is. Someone cannot wait to step on your heart and smash it into the ground because I don't know if it's an adrenaline rush for them. I don't know what their problem is. Okay? But um, it's not you. Be careful with your heart. Be careful with your soul. Be careful of loneliness. Let me say that again. Be careful of loneliness because when you're lonely, <sighs> oh, makes me tired. <laughs> um, you can do things that you normally would not do under the same circumstances. You wouldn't do that. See what I'm saying? You'll go out with someone who your gut instinct is saying, don't do that. No, that that person's not good for you. Don't, don't, don't. And you do it anyway because you're using the excuse that, well, it gets me out of the house. Well, it gets me out of my own head. I don't have to think about this or that. You know, it, it's a distraction for me. It might be a distraction for you, but are you stepping into something that you will regret stepping into later? Follow your gut instinct. Now, I'm going to tell you about this this guy that I once met. And for those of you who are widows or widowers, don't please don't take this personally. And I'm talking specifically men. I can't speak for women, but this one particular person. 
um, he's a widow and supposedly while he was married his wife didn't want to have sex with him very often okay men get a little bit tired of that they got testosterone and they get a little tired of that okay it's just the way men are normal men okay men who have issues they don't care if they have sex or not but normal men with normal levels of testosterone whose male parts work just fine yes you gotta put that in there um, they want to be intimate with their woman okay it's just how men work <laughs> okay and since he wasn't getting how do you put that delicately pleasure from his marriage when she died he decided I'm gonna play the field I'm gonna make up for all the sex I didn't get to have. I'm not going to take anybody seriously. I'm going to talk about, woe is me, my wife died, my wife died, my wife died. Okay. So because your wife died, now you're going to sleep with everybody and discard them until you want them again? There's no justification for that. Sorry. Um, there's no justification for that. So you're going to use people. Toss them up and toss them out. And you're using the platform in which you lost your spouse to justify slutting around. And you are and obviously everybody doesn't do this who's lost a spouse okay so everybody calm down please calm down I'm just talking about this one scenario um you know he's justifying sleeping around I didn't get sex no married okay and you justify not wanting a relationship with someone or not wanting to get to know someone because you lost your wife don't use that as an emotional crutch don't do that don't <laughs> don't do that and don't just bang people for the, to, to, to entertain your penis or to entertain your whatever body parts. Don't do that because it could backfire in your face. Your heart, regardless of it's hard for you to find, but your heart may play a Jedi mind trick on you. Next thing you know, you fall in love with somebody and that was not part of the plan. You were planning to fall in bed. That's why it's called falling in love because you didn't plan for that to happen. You were just going to bang booties and you're going to have as much fun as possible, baby. We're going to swing from the rafters, butt naked, butt naked. And we just going to have endless fun. And there's no repercussions for it. I'm not going to catch feelings for nobody because that's how I roll, baby. You think so? You think it's that simple? Don't be naive forever. But the sad part is people who have had a tremendous loss and I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I know what that's like because that's insulting to people who have been through it I cannot imagine especially if you actually loved your spouse I can't imagine I can't I can't wrap my brain around that but to use that to justify hoeing around manipulating people them risking catching feelings for you just so that you can say, well, you knew in the beginning this was just playtime, honey. You already know what's up. That's ridiculous, and it's not fair to other people. And if you're on the receiving end, meaning, and I wasn't planning to say all this. It, it, this just happens to me. It just happens. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I have asthma because <coughs> that's how I roll. But anyway, um, bear with me freaking gnats in the house. I can't stand that. Ew. Gross. Anyway, sorry about that. Um, for those of you that are on the receiving end and you're being used as a sperm trash can, stop doing that. And if a person told you in the beginning, hey, hey, don't be catching feelings for me. Duh, don't, don't do it. Listen. 
listen to what they're saying to you. When someone shows you who they are, say it with me, believe them. You're not going to give it to that person so good that their mind turns into oatmeal. Chances of that happening are slim to none, especially if they've been emotionally scarred and the pain, the emotional pain, runs so deep into their soul, There's their, their, their emotions are novocaine or um, uh, lidocaine. There's nothing spectacular that you could do that's going to make them go, oh my God. And they're mesmerized by you. Um, it could happen, but it's rare. When that emotional pain is so deep into the core of who they are as a human being, that their emotions cannot be reached. And I've been through that, I don't know how many times in life. <laughs> Just so much fun. Not really. Um, Novocaine. Their, their emotions are Novocaine. Or Lidocaine. I remember talking to this one person. Are you serious? Okay. Met this person in a restaurant. Made small talk with them. And I said, so what do you, you know, do you live in this area? You know, yeah, I, I come here every, I guess he's part of the National Guard or whatever the heck he, whatever he's into. Oh, okay, that's cool. What do you do in your spare time? Let me explain you something. Honey, honey, his body got rigid like a statue when I asked him, what do you like to do for fun? He would not have any eye contact with me. If anybody said to him, well, what color were her eyes? What, what, you know, what does she look like? Describe her face. He couldn't tell you because he never looked at me. His body was rigid like like stone. And he said, I'm not kidding, I'm dead serious. He said, after I asked him, well, what do you like to do for fun? He said, I'm not looking for a relationship. Did y'all hear me ask him for a relationship in that statement? What do you like to do for fun? How does that translate to, would you be my man? Are you serious? Like I said, some people are so dead emotionally, so dead, that there's nothing you can do. You could have the body of a model. You could be a model. You could be a celebrity. You could be whoever. And it doesn't matter because that person is dead. You can't bring them to life, baby. CPR does not bring emotional life to someone who's dead. It doesn't work that way. If you're dead emotionally, you're freaking dead. There's nothing, you know, I'm not going to say there's nothing that can be done. The person would, would have to um, realize that they're dead and want to do something about it. But I've seen too many times where a person is dead emotionally and they know that they're going about life the wrong way, but they, they don't care because Anytime they're willing to, anytime they're tempted, that's, that's probably a good word. Anytime they're tempted to give in and to start to feel something, they automatically yank back and they remind themselves of the pain of losing the other person so they can justify not feeling anything. They use that as an emotional crutch. That's the reason after dealing with him, I was like, I'm not dealing with nobody else. Who's, who's lost a spouse because I'm not going to be A, compared to that person, the wife or the girlfriend or whoever. I'm not going to be in competition with her. And what I do, you compare, well, you know, Marianne didn't do it like that. I'm not Marianne. Uh, look. Okay. No. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Or my face is slightly itchy, guys. I'm recovering from a, um, a, a sunburn and I'm, I'm slowly getting better, but what a mess. Anyway, you know, they'll, they'll use that as an emotional crutch. There's nothing you can say or do that's going to change their mind. 
um, I'm still, <laughs> anyway, okay, I'm still in awe about Mr. Statue. I, I, I didn't ask you for nothing. You know what I'm saying? I asked you what you like to do for fun. And you stood there like, you're going to give yourself a stroke. Calm down. Idiot. Anyway, this is why I don't deal with people. This is the reason I don't deal with people, because I ain't got the patience for it. I really don't. Anyway, <laughs> They drive me insane. Next time you see me doing a video, it'll be from the insane asylum. No thanks, I'll pass. Anyway, so A, I'm not going to be compared to her. Everything I do, well, she doesn't polish her nails like that. She didn't do the, the, the. Absolutely, no. Um, constantly pulling that per person into the relationship. Yeah, you know, I know we're on vacation, but I remember when I went on vacation with Mary Ann. So it's like you're in a threesome with his partner that's no longer here. I don't want to deal with that. And I don't really know too many people who can. Now, if you bring this person up once in a blue moon, that's different. But constantly comparing. And some people compare when the person's not passed away. And it's like, you know what? If you think they're that amazing, you can get back with them. How about we do that? If you think this person is so spectacular, they snap their fingers and a meal is cooked, then you need to make a phone call and you need to work on getting back with them because I'm tired of being compared to her. I don't want to do that. And men don't want to do that either. They don't want to be in a threesome with you unless they want to be in a threesome. They don't want you pulling another party in constantly. You know, whether it be because the person passed on and you never um, got over it or uh, you're pining for a relationship that didn't work out and, and you're always going to be hurt by it and you just hope one day, you know, and you're, you're still stuck in that fantasy world of, you know, if things didn't work out with this person, maybe I'll get back with someone. So, you know what, please, let me tell you something. <laughs> I'm not going to say his name, but, 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 there was a guy that I had a crush on in high school. And we stayed in contact for years and years. I mean, we stayed in contact with each other. Um, we even wrote letters to each other. Yes, yes, I know. What a foreign concept, right? Uh, we wrote letters to each other, handwritten letters, okay? And I'd known him since high school, and we stayed, I had a crush on him back then, let's just keep it real, I had a crush on him back then, and then years and years later, you know, we stayed in touch for a long time, I think we lost touch and then we gained trust, uh, I mean, we gained um, communication again or something, or whatever, I, you know? And we were kind of seeing each other, and it was really innocent because the only thing we've ever done was hold hands and kiss, okay? Um, yeah. And one time we were, <laughs> don't laugh at me, y'all, don't be laughing, it's not funny. <laughs> one time we were standing on the street kissing. We were in our own world, okay? We quit, quit, we, we stopped kissing, you know, and we heard clapping, and there were people down the street clapping for us. That's embarrassing. <laughs> I'm sure he felt proud, like, yeah, <laughs> I'm the man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But anyway. Um, so anyway, long story short, he was living in Connecticut, and I was living in New York at the time. And... Um, I hadn't seen him since whenever. I mean, it'd be a long time since I'd seen him. And at that time, I was in dance and drama group, and there's another video where I talked about the entertainment industry and me pursuing it and all that other business, right? Which it didn't pan out, but that's okay, because if you don't go for your dreams, you'll never know if that was meant for you to have or not, so you might as well just go for it. So anyway, I was in a dance and drama group, so 
the building that I worked in, I was a teacher in daycare, and then downstairs was called Mind Builders. And in, in Mind Builders, we had you audition for dance and or drama. I auditioned for both, and I made both auditions. So we were rehearsing like every, every, I don't remember if it was a couple days a week or something. I don't remember. But anyway, now mind you, mind you, I had not seen this person in an extremely long time. Okay? You understand what I'm saying? So I'm coming to, <clears throat> walking down the street because at that, you know, you live in New York. A lot of people don't have a car. You know, you take, you know, buses everywhere. You take the train, subway train, or whatever the case is. And I walked home because it was several blocks. And I was young back then and could do that kind of thing. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Quit picking on me. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm walking down the street, and I see this blue car that looks really familiar. And I'm staring at it like, no freaking way, what? what? No freaking way. No, no, no. And then he gets out of the car, and he walks towards me, and I'm like, Oh my God. And I just feel like my heart's doing cartwheels, you know? You feel like you can't breathe. <laughs> um, I had on, I had rehearsal that night. I'm trying to remember now. I went to work and I came home to change my clothes and then I was going to go back. And I had him take me to rehearsal. But he popped up out of nowhere. How do you do that? You're in a different state. You're in Connecticut. I'm in New York and you just popped up at where I was living when I was living with my grandparents at that time. And he never asked me to be his girlfriend. I'm an old school kind of girl. I need you to ask me to be your girlfriend because I'm not going to assume that because we spend all our time together, just because we're doing excessive dating, that we are now a couple. I'm not making that assumption. Absolutely no. <laughs> okay. So I'm an old-fashioned kind of girl. I need you to ask me to be your girlfriend. So anyway, so we're on the same page, okay? So then, years, you know, we like I said, we stayed in contact for years and years and years, and he was always a crush. And then he was going away to college in North Carolina, which is where he's originally from. And I said, well, what are we going to do? Are we going to, you know, stay in contact? Or, you know, what are we going to do? Well, I don't know, because I'm going to college and this and that. And you know. Okay. What does that have to do with anything? People go to college every day. What what, what are you talking about? And um, <sighs> things just kind of fell apart. So then, anyway, which was, was silly, right? You don't cut off your previous life because this person's going away for whatever reason. Uh, I, I can't be friends with y'all no more. I'm done. I mean, that sounds ludicrous, right? So, he never asked me to be his girlfriend. Ever. And we always had chemistry. Always. It took me a really long time to get over him. And, and after so many years, he'd resurface in my brain again. And I'm like, maybe I should get in touch with him. And the logical part of my brain said, let it go. Let it go. All right? Let it go. Because if it was meant to be, it would already have happened a long time ago. You know what I'm saying? But when you don't have closure, you don't have, you're kind of left dangling like a carrot on a string. So what you have to do is, and oh, by the way, I asked him way after the fact, why did you, point blank, why didn't you ask me to be your girlfriend? Oh, I said, was I not attractive enough? He said, oh, you're one of the most beautiful girls I've known. Then what was the problem? And he's just like, baby, 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 baby. Go on with yourself. Go on somewhere. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Go, go, go. I got nothing else to say to you. Um, we stayed in touch, and we eventually faded to black. I mean, he did his world, and I did my world, and whatever. But because we never had closure for the longest time, it took me a good while. What if, and what if, and what if. 
and it'll drive you insane. So you have to create your own closure. If you if that person doesn't provide it for you, you have to create it yourself. Maybe write a goodbye letter. Never give it to them. Hello. Don't give it to them. This isn't for them. This is for you. Okay. Write a goodbye letter. Um, there's no rules and regulations as to what you write because this is for you. And like I said, you're not going to give it to them. Um, write a journal. You know. And when you go to therapy, if you ever go to therapy, a therapist will tell usually they'll tell you keeping a journal is good because it prevents those thoughts from swirling around in your head swirling and swirling and swirling and swirling. it stops that it gives them and it gives those thoughts a exit it gets them out of your head it stops the swirling like a like a like a, what do you call it, a merry-go-round. It stops the merry-go-round because it's giving those thoughts an exit. And you're putting it on paper. And then you can keep the journal. I'm sorry, hold on. Sorry, guys. Um... Sorry. sorry. <clears throat> I'm like, who is writing me? Anyway, sorry about that. I apologize. Um, but it gives those thoughts a place to go. Gets them from the... You know, it'll make you crazy. So if that person doesn't give you clo uh, closure, they may never give you clo closure. So you have to create your own own and that doesn't just apply to a person that you may have a crush on it may also apply to um, when you when someone passes away and it was sudden and you, you you didn't get to have closure from that either and I've experienced that too so create a journal light a candle in memory of them carve their name into the candle and, and that's their candle every time you light it you know what I'm saying I mean just you create your own um, closure and it works. It really does work. So um, I'm going to get going. It was great talking to you guys. Sorry I've been gone for a while. But like I said, I have to be inspired. Um, and this thought, you know, dealing with someone who you're addicted to, that hit me like a ton of bricks. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess that's the topic. So I love you guys, subscribers. I do not take any of you for granted. I don't take anything for granted. You guys are special. You should know that you're special. Okay? You should know that you are special. And for those of you who are not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Hit the button. Let's go. Let's get her done. All right. I love you guys and have a great evening.